One, two, three, one, two, three, drink. One, two, three, one, two, three, drink. One, two, three, one, two, three, drink. I scored for my paper. I'm gonna score for my PSLE. For my PSLE. Hey, Xin Hui. Wow. Right on time. 133 and 33 seconds sharp. How was your PSLE math paper? It was good. Any difficult questions? Well, there were some difficult questions, but I'm glad I went for the Mind Stretcher PSLE Power Up in June. It prepared me for it. Well, I remember you telling me about that. I missed the PSLE Power Up, but I'm glad I went for PSLE, the last lap, by Mind Stretcher. It helped me a lot. Wanna discuss questions? Okay. Let's look at the first question. Question 1. A school participated in a fundraising competition. The total sum contributed by Class A and Class B was $108, while the total sum contributed by Class B, Class C and Class D was $180. Class B contributed one-fifth of what Classes A, B, C, and D contributed. How much did Class B contribute? Let us take a look at the second sentence. The total sum contributed by Classes A and B was $108, while the total sum contributed by Classes B, C, and D was $180. Therefore, the addition of $108 and $180 will represent the sum contributed by classes A, C, D, and twice that by class B, totaling up to $288. Let us now take a look at the third sentence. Using our MS Power Code, First Come, First Served, we know that the amount contributed by class B is represented by one unit, while the amount contributed by classes A B, C, and D combined is 5 units. This makes a total of 6 units. We will then see that 6 units represent $288. Since the amount contributed by class B is 1 unit, we can find 1 unit by dividing $288 by 6. Therefore, class B contributed $48. Let's move on to the next question. Question 2. There was a cuboid measuring 10 cm by 5 cm by 4 cm. Tom painted the whole cuboid. Part A. What was the total painted surface area of the cuboid? Part B. The whole cuboid was then cut into 1 cm cubes. B. Part 1. How many cubes did not have any painted surface? B. Part 2 How many cubes have two painted surfaces? First, we have drawn a cuboid measuring 10 cm by 5 cm by 4 cm for better illustration. For part A, to find the total painted surface area of the cuboid, we would need to find the area of six surfaces. Among the six surfaces, there are actually three sets of identical areas. The top surface area and the bottom surface area is equals to two sets of 10 cm multiplied by 5 cm, which is equals to 100 square centimeters. The left surface area and the right surface area is equals to two sets of 5 cm multiplied by 4 cm, which is equals to 40 square centimeters. Lastly, the front surface area and the back surface area is equal to two sets of 10 cm multiplied by 4 cm, which is equal to 80 square centimeters. Therefore, the answer to part A will be an addition of these three sets of identical areas and they add up to a total of 220 square centimeters. 
Moving on to B part 1. To visualize the cubes which did not have any painted surface, we have to remove those which are painted on the surface. When the outermost painted layers of the front and back are removed, the remaining breadth of the cuboid is 3 cm. When the outermost painted layers of the left and right are removed, the length of the cuboid is reduced to 8 cm. And lastly, when the outermost painted layers of the top and bottom are removed, the remaining height of the cuboid is 2 cm. 8 cubes along the length, 3 cubes along the breadth, and 2 cubes along the height are not painted. Therefore, 48 cubes did not have any painted surface. Moving on to B part 2. The cuboid was then cut into 1 cm cubes. Starting with the length of the cuboid, there are 8 cubes with 2 painted surfaces. Since there are 4 sets, we multiply it by 4 to get 32 cubes with 2 painted surfaces along the length. Moving on to the breadth of the cuboid, there are 3 cubes with 2 painted surfaces. We multiply it by 4 to get 12 cubes with 2 painted surfaces along the breadth. Lastly, along the height of the cuboid, there are 2 cubes with 2 painted surfaces. Again, we multiply it by 4 to get 8 cubes with 2 painted surfaces along the height. In total, 52 cubes had 2 painted surfaces. Let's move on to the next question. Question 3. Gopal's salary was $2,030 more than Henry's salary. They earned a total of $3,850. Part A. What was Gopal's salary? Part B. B. Gopal earned $5 more than Henry each day. Gopal worked three times as many days as Henry. How many days did Gopal work? Looking at the key phrase more than, we can use MS Power Code Big Approach Small Approach, specifically the big approach to find Gopal's salary. Since Gopal's salary was $2,030 more than Henry's salary, and their total earnings is $3,850, we can draw a comparison model to show this information. Using the big approach, we find that Gopal's salary was $2,940. Moving on to part B. Firstly, the two key information we have here is that Gopal earned $5 more than Henry each day, and Gopal worked three times as many days as Henry in total. First of all, we can find Henry's salary in absolute value by subtracting Gopal's salary from the total of $3,850, which gives us $910 as Henry's salary. Next, since Gopal worked three times as many days as Henry, we can associate Gopal's salary of $2,940 with 3 units. His salary for every 1 unit of days worked can be derived by dividing $2,940 by 3, which gives us $980. The difference in their salaries in 1 unit of days is $70. Since their earnings differ by $5 each day, we can find the number of days in one unit by dividing $70 by $5. The number of days in one unit is 14. Thus, since Gopal worked 3 times as many days as Henry, we multiply 14 by 3 to find that Gopal worked 42 days. the teachers covered almost everything in our workshop. Yes, isn't that great? Such a relief! Now that PSLE is over, what are your plans? I'll be going for the Mind Stretcher Skills Builder Workshop on the 19th and 20th of October. Me too! See, See you there! there.